Okay, so yeah, first we're going to just download Eclipse. Um, I'm just taking the latest version just to check whether it works. And we're just going to download the zip file. You can also get the installer. Um, that was fast, very good. Uh, then I'm just going to extract it. And let's see whether it works out of the box. So I already have a Java installed. And we might have to configure it. <clears throat> we'll see. So you can use any other IDE that you like. Uh, I'm just going to show it with Eclipse because they have, well, usually good Java support and uh, Gradle is already installed, but you can use any other uh, yeah, IDE as well. Also Visual Studio Code has the, the plugins for Gradle, so that shouldn't be any problem. Okay, so we're just going to select some workspace here. Uh, could be any folder. So this folder doesn't exist yet. Um, as you see here, it doesn't exist. Uh, that's a good idea to use a folder that doesn't exist because this will create some workspace configuration, which doesn't really have to do anything with your project. Uh, so for example, the metadata. So yeah, take a folder that is empty or create a new one. Okay, so you might notice that it's quite slow. And here, this is also the first uh, window that pops up after Eclipse has started. Um, on Windows, there's a, well, automatic virus scanning. Uh, Eclipse loads lots of files. So we can say exclude Eclipse IDE from being scanned to improve performance. And then uh, all the later starts should be faster. Uh, to confirm this, okay, good. Now, uh, yeah. We are going to import projects from Git. Um, yeah, let's just use this. And well, actually uh, the, the project, you could just clone it uh, in any way you like and then use an existing local repository or uh, yeah, you clone the URI, so let's see. Oh, no, that's the wrong folder. Um, I have, I'm, I'm going to use this one from uh, GitHub, but you will have your own template created. So this one here, that's uh, the, the template. <clears throat> so we can use this. Um, yeah, and then you have to create your credentials. So this, uh, ah, do we need credentials? I don't know. So we're going to create, uh, take the main branch. Um, okay, I already have it, so. Just going to give it a different name. Um, and then I'm going to import it as an existing Eclipse project. There it is, that's the name of the Eclipse project. And we just say finish. And then, um, yeah, here it is. So let's see down here, you see it's synchronizing the Gradle project workspace. That's great. It's probably now going to download some dependencies, going to configure it. Um, one thing that is, yeah, the first thing uh, you might notice is that there are some main files. So there is an app CLI and an app GUI, and we're going to have a look at them very soon. But uh, for now, you will see the Gradle configuration. Basically, there's this uh, build Gradle here. Um, and there it also selects in the application uh, block here, it says a main class. So this one is currently configured to run the graphical user interface. So maybe let's run it. We can uh, have a look at what Gradle tasks there are. So we're going to say show view, uh, other, and then we type, if we just type here Gradle, it will show us the Gradle tasks. And we're going to select that and say open. And then somewhere it pops up. So here we see Gradle tasks. So for example, there's the application run task. And if we want to run this application, we can just say run. We double click on it and then it's going to run. And there is our application. It has a 
two buttons, load author. It loads the authors from some database. Uh, we can also replace this and say well, some author and say add author. Um, and then we try load authors again and we see the author has been added. So it's an extremely simple functionality. Um, but what this already shows you is it shows you how to use a simple database. So let's have a look at the code and how to create a Java GUI. So this one uses Java FX and it's already configured in the build.gradle to use the well, current version of Java FX, which is uh, version 2101. And um, this one here, so a Java FX application has to extend the Java FX application application class. And then it has to override the start method. And here in the start method, we create text fields. So uh, we create this text field. That's simply a new text field. This will be this thing. And then a button with the text load authors, that one, and a button with the add authors. These buttons, they have to be added to this scene. So for that, <clears throat> we need a layout. The box here means that it's vertically arranging the elements that we put in. And then we see we put in the, uh, we, we tell the layout children, add these children, load authors button, the text field here, and the add button. Otherwise, it wouldn't uh, show up on the screen. And then we create a new scene based on that layout and we show it. Okay, so basically, this stuff here, if you're just using one scene, you're probably not going to change this. And this stuff here, um, you have to adjust it according to your application, of course. Um, and you see something needs to happen when we click the buttons, right? So here uh, for the load button, there is an, uh, we tell the button on action, you should do something. So here, this something is uh, a Lambda expression. So we're basically telling it, take the event you're getting and call print authors. Print authors is a method here. So you can do anything with this event. We, we're just going to ignore this event. We're not going to use it in print authors. Um, but if you want to know how to use these kind of events, you, you, shouldn't, you can probably have a look at the documentation of JavaFX. So here, this is just a very simple example. Um, the idea is to keep these set on action things uh, short so that the actual logic is implemented in some method that you can then later uh, easier test. So here, if we say print authors, what's going to happen is we're going to tell the uh, data store SQL, which is here, this guy, that's actually uh, accessing some SQL database to read all the authors and uh, make a string out of this list of authors that we get back and then set the text of the text field. So the text field that we got here, uh, that's this one text field that we passed uh, basically that this text field, and there's only one text field here. We could pass different text fields to show the authors and to load the authors, but this is really just a very basic example. Um, yeah, and similar um, for the ad book, it simply gets the text of the text field and passes it to the ad book method here. The ad book method also needs a title. So uh, let's have a look at this ad book method. We can just jump there. Um, that's in the data score SQL. There's this add book method and that allows us to add the book. It uses some SQL statements. So here, um, <clears throat> this simple file actually gives us access to some database. This database will be stored between program runs in this file here on the, in your, in your project folder, uh, but it's basically just going to create uh, an SQL connection. It creates a table if it doesn't exist, the books table with a an ID, which is a primary key automatically incremented, uh, and then an author name and a title name, uh, which are both strings basically of 255 uh, characters length. And then um, the read authors simply says select everything from book and then get the string author for each selected uh, result and then uh, the ad book is uh, doing this sql statement here insert into books author titles values and yes you see here this thing would be 
uh, could be easily attacked by an SQL injection attack. So um, look into prepared statements to make it a bit more secure in your application. Great, so that's um, if we want to run it as the GUI. Next time we run it, we can probably just click this uh, run here and it will it will remember that we were doing this run task. Um, but we can always go back to Gradle tasks and select the run task. Then we said it also has to work from the console. So uh, just going to do that. Going to go to the uh, <clears throat> folder where it is. Uh, that's where we download this. So uh, if we there say Gradle run, then it should work also out of the IDE. It's great. Now, um, if you don't want to start with a graphical user uh, interface, then you can change these things in your uh, build Gradle file. So once you open the project, you will see there is a build Gradle file in the root. It has some <clears throat> elements. So for example, it has an application plugin, which allows us to run an application, a Java application, then also has the JavaFX plugin for the GUI that we want to use. Um, it tells us which repositories we might used to download dependencies, and then it basically tells us the dependencies. So the dependencies here, they allow you to use libraries from the internet that Gradle automatically will download for you. And then everybody who runs Gradle Run will automatically get those libraries. Uh, yeah, so this one here is some standard, uh, the testing library and uh, some helper functions from uh, Google Guava. And then we have here a library for reading comma separate value files and here the h2 database driver that we just used for the sql database and then we have this block here which says which one is the main class so right now we were using the main class app gui uh, but there's another main class app cli for the command line interface we will also have a look at that and that's this one here app cli See, it's even shorter because it just does some printing and yeah, let's just run it. So we can run it, of course, here as well. Now that we changed it, uh, if we now say Gradle run, so this Gradle W, that's the Gradle wrapper. So we say Gradle wrapper run. And then it's going to, yeah, tell us the authors in the books database. Let's see if. Uh, that is what we were expecting to see. Um, here it starts, sets the command to one. Um, then it switches over the command. If the command is one, it prints the authors in the database by taking now this data store CSV. So we could of course also take the data store SQL, but I just wanted to show you two different ways. Uh, one using simply comma separate value files and the other one using uh, SQL queries to access the database. Okay, so yeah, and then it asks us, so that's the case, switch case, and then it asks us, please enter a new command. Um, so if we want to quit, it would be zero. That's it. Yeah, not so interesting, so let's run it again. <clears throat> um, yeah, so now let's do maybe one list authors. That's basically doing the same thing as before. Uh, let's maybe add an author. So we say number two, now we add an author name. And then, uh, ah, it tells us twice that the author was added. So it has it twice. I'm not sure why we need it twice. Maybe one would have been enough. <laughs> okay, so now we can say list authors. Um, and we see, yeah, now it has the added author. So we could also do some command that doesn't exist. This will tell us simply that it's an unknown command. If you type something else that is not an integer, because here what it does, it tries to read the next line and then parses it into an integer. So that's not going to work right now. It just crashes and that's it. So yeah, you could add some uh, error handling here. Okay, um, but that's basically how things work. If we read authors, it's going to use this method here, read authors. So with uh, pressing the control key, and then clicking on a method, you're going to jump to its implementation. 
uh, this button here will link the implementation so that you see uh, the, the one in the in the window to the file here in the uh, package explorer so that we see where it's actually located. So here that's the read authors of this data store CSV. This has uh, a constant that tells us which file it's going to read. So this, uh, where is it, book CSV source. Yeah, here we can just right click on it and say open with it, open with text editor. And then we see here, yeah, that's the stuff, uh, the entries in the CSV file. Okay, so um, in the data store here, it's just going to do something uh, based on some tutorial for the comma separate value files. It's going to read the uh, CSV file and then uh, from each record, so each element in the CSV file, it's going to take the author, add it to a list, uh, take the author name, add it to a list, and then it's going to return this list to us. So here, uh, the other one, in case uh, we pressed two, um, then we're going to get the add book for author and some string here. So let's jump there. And uh, we have to say it, it basically opens the CSV file again. Uh, it depends stuff to the file or creates it. And then it sets the default format and simply prints a record, flushes it to the uh, printer, and that's it. Um, that's here, this try with block. Uh, so it uses this buffered writer and uh, the CSV printer. Uh, so this, if you put this in the parentheses of the try with, uh, it's with because here you add resources, then it automatically closes them afterwards. If you wouldn't have them inside the try, uh, you would inside this, uh, yeah, round parentheses of the try, you would have to open and close them, um, yeah, separately. Okay, great. Um, that's an overview of the template. And of course, uh, everything that runs on an external console here, this will also run from your run task inside your IDE. So if, if you had the task uh, window open here and you don't see the console, then you might have to click here console. Um, and then you see here that we are being asked the same thing and it lists the author that we added here because it's basically now in the CSV file, right? So if we now add uh, an author here, so let's say two, we want to add another author and the author name is, uh, hello, strange name, but yeah. And then we quit, then uh, we can run it here again, just to show you that it's actually the same, exactly the same code that it's running. So here you see also the new author, hello edit. Okay, um, yeah, and basically between CLI and graphical user interface, just decide in the beginning which one you're going to use um, and select here in the belt cradle file, which one you want to run. If your console goes missing, say like that, and uh, you're going to run your Gradle tasks, uh, yeah. Uh, it might open it automatically for you and then you just have to switch to it. Uh, so we can then again list the authors or quit. Uh, but if it really goes missing, you, you can get these things or if the Gradle tasks goes missing, uh, you can get them with window and then show view, you can say other. And then here you could type, for example, console and select the console and that's how you get the console back. And similarly, the tasks, the greater tasks, you can say window show view other uh, greater tasks, select them and that's how you get them. 